Use the referral link in the description to G2A.com for all of your Xbox codes, PlayStation codes and video games and be sure to use the code CHEZ at checkout to get yourself 3% cash back. Hey guys, welcome to episode number 9 of season 5 of the career mode RTG. We're in March, we're not in a transfer window, but we are looking to make a signing. Over the past couple of videos you guys have been leaving me your suggestions. And of course we sold Harry Wilson in the January window, but decided in the moment to give Ziegler the starting spot on the right and not by someone else. That decision was supported by you guys in the comment section, so I'm glad that you agreed with me and thought that that was a good thing to do. We also decided then to sell Uno in the summer window next year, but spend the Harry Wilson money this season to ensure it doesn't go to waste. So I've added the names that you've been suggesting into my shortlist. I've narrowed it down to a handful uh, from the amount that you were offering me. There were a number that were similar and there were a number that I didn't really want to go after. So I'm waiting on scout reports for Arzani. Matty Cash is back on the list and Ben Woodburn is here as well. I think we've kind of outgrown Jack Clark's level. I don't think Jack Clark is really at that sort of uh, level that we're looking to uh, to sign now, unfortunately. He was a decent prospect, but at 76 rated, unfortunately, he's not good enough at this stage now that we've had a decent season in the Premier League that uh, we're looking to sign someone in the early 80s now. I'm not, I think I mentioned either in yesterday's video or the episode before, not really wanting to go any higher than 85 rated at this stage because we're not yet an established Premier League side. We're not yet in the European spots. So I don't want to get all FIFA career mode about it and sign someone that's massively high rated when ideally, you know, we wouldn't be able to attract a player like that. I have got Callum Hudson-Odoi on the list, but being Roma and being Callum Hudson-Odoi, uh, I don't think I'm going to be able to go for him. So I am going to remove him from the list as things stand right now. Uh, players that I have reports on or the stats for include Adamola Lookman at Everton. He's someone that I genuinely am quite interested in. Can play on the left-hand side of the field or the right, obviously, as well. And at striker, if needed. He's got good finishing at 86. Obviously, his ball control is decent. And his dribbling is very, very good. Crossing's really good, too. And he's quick. He's agile. He's got good balance. I'm really, actually, quite keen on Adam Ola Lookman. Uh, he's got potential of about 86, 87, I believe. Ben Woodburn, I, I'm not sure what his stats look like right now. But it looks like he's going to be quick and decent on the ball and passing wise. Matty Cash, I'm not sure if he's going to be up to standard, but he might have grown since we last looked at him. I don't know anything about Daniel Arzani, so we'll wait and see on that front. Adama Traore, three star skills, two star weak foot is a bit of a turn off, but he's very well, he physically could not get any quicker. 99 acceleration, 99 sprint speed. He's strong as well to go with his agility and balance too. Dribbling's 99, ball control's 92, his crossing is okay at 83, but being only having a two-star weak foot, that would mean that I'd have probably, if he starts on the left, have to cut in and then whip from the uh, from the right foot rather than crossing on the left. So he's still a good option, and we could maybe switch Ziegler from the right to the left to accommodate for Adama Troyero, but at present, he's not at the top of my list, but certainly an option, one of the cheaper options. Justin Cliver is at Torino, four-star, four-star, very, very fast. Again, very agile, great balance. Technically, very, very good too. Long shots of 99. That intrigues me. You guys know how much I love to bag in the long shots. Flair trait as well. Four star, four star. Quite expensive at uh, 34 million pounds, but uh, doable, I think, considering his Torino. If he was still at Ajax, I'd have said, maybe, maybe not. But the fact that he's gone to Torino, yeah, okay, I think we could do that. Diogo Jota really impressed us with an overhead kick goal when we played Wolves in the Cup last season. may even have been the season before. And uh, he's grown to 85 rated. So he's at the very top of the the kind of rating, arbitrary rating barrier that I'm setting for myself. But he's very expensive too at 40 million and wages are 115,000 pounds. So he might just be out of my price bracket as well, actually. But 91 dribbling, 92 ball control. His crossing's not as good. But he can play at striker as well. And... Undoubtedly, one of the very best players on this shortlist. Harvey Barnes is here again. Four-star weak foot, three-star skills for him. He's physically okay. He's not rapid, but he's decent. But technically, he's good as well. I'm not sure about Harvey Barnes. But at the minute, I'm leaning towards Adam Ola Lookman. The four-star weak foot. 
and the fact that his crossing is very, very good, so he's more suited to that wide roll and could cut inside on his right foot and use that 86 finishing as well. Then it's probably Diogo Jota or Justin Kluivert that are next on my list. Kluivert is cheaper and on a lot less a week wage-wise, but the minute it's out of Ola Lutman, I will wait until I've got these scout reports back on uh, a couple of the other players as well. We have about 40 million to spend, so that, um, that fee for Diogo Jota might be a stumbling block at this stage. Uh, although I, I could always use Uno as make weight, but that would really would really mean that you know we wouldn't be able to maximize the potential profit from an Uno sale in season number six. So I'm unsure at this stage. This month, we only have three games. It's Liverpool at home first, followed by Brighton away and Nottingham Forest at home. We are in the top half of the table and have a game in hand on a couple of the teams above us, although we are outside of a game in hand's worth of points from Everton in eighth with four points behind them and then five points behind Wolves who too have a game in hand with three points above Newcastle. Cardiff have a game in hand on us, or sorry, have a game in hand on Newcastle as well. Four points behind us. If we lose our game in hand, then obviously they'd come back up to us. Liverpool is 16th currently, but you can't write Liverpool off when you play them because, you know, they've got the quality in their side. But obviously we beat them earlier on this season at Anfield. And what I actually want to do is do this so that I can select their side, but play them in their red kit. I'm going to go and sort Liverpool's starting lineup out little bit tight although it looks pretty strong it looks as if the the AI have actually given them uh, a pretty strong starting lineup there and Yaku Williams I'll probably throw in ahead of Mitsu Batshuayi and other than that I had a few people asking how you set the opposition tactics up it's basically when you're on that um, team selection screen I might as well just show you it now whilst I remember when you're on this screen turn a second controller on and then set it to the away side you can then obviously manually uh, select their kits and the team and then when it's loading the game just turn that secondary controller off or load the game and then go into side select and uh, turn the controller off or just move it to the middle and, uh, and get rid of it. Right, Jordan Brewster is a player that has been recommended to me by you guys but I don't quite think he's good enough at this stage. Isn't there already a centre back? He is. Okay, they're playing already there uh, but have they got any other massively impressive players on the bench? Not really. There's Ben Woodburn. Ah, Ben Woodburn, I can see his stats. Brilliant, don't have to wait for that scout report. 96 acceleration, 88 sprint speed, good agility, good balance. 88 ball control, 85 dribbling, 64 crossing is going to be an issue because I want him to play out wide on the left. I think I'm going to have to wait and sign someone else, one of the others, unfortunately. Ryan Kent is always popular. 67 curve, but 82 crossing, ball control is okay, dribbling's good. Mm, I think we've got better options. Okay, well that's the side that Liverpool are going to start with then. I'll probably still go through the um, I'll still go through the, the lineup in the Premier League graphics, but what I'll do now is turn that controller off, and then when it loads the game, I can play with just me, and the AI will take control of Liverpool. That's how you do what I've been doing, as a few people have asked. But for now, let's go and concentrate on actually playing some football and get ourselves some points to stay in the top half. Every position higher we can possibly finish is a significant chunk of extra prize money at the end of the season. And then it loads here, you see, because I've turned that other controller off, you just back out, and then it will say warning, and then you just click yes, and then you're good to go. Right, let's reiterate, Liverpool starting 11. Alisson in goal, Elvedi at right back, Rudiger, Van Dijk, and Robertson at left back. Henderson, Fabinho, and Keita in the midfield, with Salah, Williams, and Mane as the front three. It's a very strong Liverpool side. But they were very strong last time we played them. And we won 2-0, I think, up at Anfield. So we aren't certainly to be underestimated. And we shall try our absolute best to get a victory here. They are... How this team... How this team is, like, 16th, 17th in the league and threatened with relegation is completely beyond me. But that's career mode, I suppose. Let's we'll see if we can get ourselves an early goal here. We have been scoring very early on in a number of games so far this season. It doesn't look like this is going to be one of those occasions. Savi knocks that back down there to Suarez Garcia. Just gets to it ahead of Navi Keita. See the run being made by Ziegler. So we'll use it with Tom Davies here. And pull that back. Tom Davies scored against Liverpool in the last game. He might set up Savi here. He has done. But Alisson has done brilliantly. We've got possession back though. Davies crossed to Oscar Hill. He occasionally scores a banger. He came close there, but Alisson with another good save. It was pretty ambitious from that distance. I'll try and win his head or knock that to Sabi. It will find Suarez Garcia. There is Sabi. Hits it early. Again, Alisson's positioning and goalkeeping ability is too good for me to score. Headed by Hill. Still, we could keep the pressure up. 
Ziegler's gone. Sabi to Suarez Garcia out of his feet. And again, Allison with the save. With the throw. Here's Ziegler. Suarez Garcia. There's Oscar Hill. Driving forward. Sabi's with me. Oh, space. Ziegler. 90 plus finishing. Oh, I thought that was going to go in off Robertson for an own goal. Good block, as it happens, from the Scotsman. Oscar Hill is there, and he will be able to get to this loose ball. Suarez Garcia is there on the edge of the box, but he's well marshaled by Henderson, who actually backed off him as soon as I said that. Tom Davis will get that out wide there to Matt Penny. I'll work it into the middle here to Suarez Garcia. Look for Savvy, take a touch, spin. He did well, but a little bit of a loose touch, and Robertson gets to it. Oh, Henderson does well there. Oh, he's done well again, Jordan Henderson. Here's Fabinho, back to the Englishman. Into Inyaki Williams. There's Fabinho. Salah's there waiting on the right-hand side and will be used. Salah to Elvedi to Mo Salah again. This is dangerous. I don't like this one bit. Jaden Vogel at the back post does just enough with Sadio Mane waiting. Liverpool yet to have an effort on goal in this game. Robertson with the cross. Away by Tom Davies. Henderson wins that header. Down by Keita around the corner to Inyaki Williams. There's their first effort, but comfortable enough for Gunn. And that would be nil-nil at half-time. Elvedi with a throw into Salah. Salah. Elvedi to Oxley Chamberlain, who's just come off the bench here. Cater gets into the box. He's going to drop back to Alex Oxley Chamberlain, who squeezes that home at the near post. The Liverpool lead. He's come on for Jordan Henderson, taken the captain's armband off him, and then led by example, as captain should. Nice little one, two. And then I just couldn't get across to him in time to stop him having the shot. Near post questions asked of the keeper that little jump and then he just didn't react in time I don't know whether it was shot power or just a very well struck hit but we are 1-0 down here Liverpool have not had too many efforts but the first one to go in is theirs although there is time for us to try and get back level if we can certainly not been as effective in this second half as we were in the first but hopefully oh hopefully we can still get ourselves back into this game Keita, down the line there to Mane. Nice turn. Inside to Nabi Keita again and return to Sadio Mane. Liverpool have been as dangerous in the second half as we were in the first. The difference is they've actually scored a goal. Although the difference is they have Alisson in goal and I don't. So that certainly plays a big role in why they've scored and we haven't. I think I was perhaps being a little bit too harsh on Angus Gunn by calling him out for that first goal. Those of our dates can be difficult to get the ball past as it turns out it was Andrew Robertson that got the interception in. I've got a couple of changes waiting to be made. Morris coming on and Elliot uh, Lee as well. But, oh, I missed the challenge. I'm not sure if those changes are going to be enough. I see I'm bringing... Oh, strike! Well, they're certainly going to have to be even better than initially we thought they might because Michi Batshuayi buries Liverpool second. We beat them by two goals to nil on their patch, and they're now doing the same to us on ours. Also brought on Gerzic on the right-hand side as well for electric pace. Actually, no, I think I did go for, I did go for Morris on the, in the end on the right-hand side. I've thought about giving it to Gerzic for the pace, but I went for Morris for the extra technical ability. I'm not sure whether that will turn out to be a good or a bad decision, but time will tell. Uno inside to Hill. There's Suarez Garcia. Back to Oscar Hill. Sabi's there. If I can spin the defender, which I can't do, we could have found ourselves in with a decent chance of getting a goal back. But I have been resorting, or being forced to resort to, long-distance efforts in this game. The majority of them have been long-distance efforts. Every time I get the ball into someone in the area, there's a defender right there, and or the touch of the player lets me down, and then it goes straight to a defender. Oh, not far wide from Sabi at all, but it wasn't on target. Salah, they're just playing the ball about nicely. Now Liverpool winding down the clock. Well, they might push for a third. Prola with a tackle on Salah and a foul is given. They do have the opportunity to take the free kick before time is out. Referee is going to give him a yellow card here, I think. It's just the yellow. Yeah, oh, I did worry for a minute the way it was taking so long. Would have been rather controversial if he dished out a red card there. Can Salah give them a third goal right at the very end of the game? No, back Shuai took it on his left foot. I don't know why he did that, but regardless, it went wise. But they do get the victory. They've returned the favour on us. We beat them at Anfield. And with their only two shots on target, they've beaten me at the Abbey. Manchester United beat Cardiff by four goals to one. Wolves beat Huddersfield. Cardiff were in and around us in the league. Wolves are in and around us in the league. One losing, one winning. Obviously, we've just been defeated. Up next for us, though, is Brighton. 
and hopefully we can be better in that one. All right, Brighton have Matthew Ryan in goal. Navarro, Duffy, Dunk, and Mateu. Mateu? Oh, I don't know how to pronounce that. I don't know what the little um, accents do in that language. Carabao, Oliveira, Diawara, and March with Gross and Viseu up top. Viseu played very well. Brighton last time we played against him and did score. He's 85 rated for Zeu and obviously Diawara in midfield is very good as well. He's up at 87 rated. So Brighton have a couple of standout talents. Question is, will they stand out today? Navarro, Oliveira. Good possession play from Brighton this. Not going anywhere with it, but I can't get near them. So certainly something's working. Decent delivery, but Jaden Bogle will head that away. Mateu gets it back to Sonny March. Backs in. Mateu, that's always rising. Nice ball around the corner to Pascal Gross. 13th minute. Decent delivery. Prella doesn't do too much there. <laughs> Goodbye. That was sick from Uno. Really enjoyed that. If he did that more often, that'd be great. Davies looking for Ziegler. Finds him well. Looking to get away from... I had a look on my pronunciation website. Apparently it's Alej Magayou. Is how you pronounce his name. Manuel Savi is how you pronounce his though. Cambridge United 1, Brighton 0. Our main man at it again. I believe that's his 10th goal in the Premier League. Like, are you beaten? Tom Davis finds Savvy, spins well, gets away with the acceleration and wasn't that well placed. But his shot power beats Matthew Ryan. It was indeed his 10th goal of the Premier League season. Finds Vizio to Sergio. It's gross. Nicely cut out by Matthew. Henny. Oh, good footwork from Suarez Garcia. And we found Savvy. Sorry, Shane. Oh, You're not catching him. You're not getting anywhere near him, Shane Duffy. Apparently, he stayed with him. Too sure about that. Savvy will find Suarez Garcia out of his feet. Shot. Well struck. Well saved. Matthew Ryan keeps the scoreline at just 1 0. Let's see if they can score an equaliser. Hopefully, not. Gross with the delivery. It's good. It's. Oh, Getrauda heads away this time again. Savvy oh, can't turn. Look at you. And out to him again, the left the back. The, uh, Alez. Nice tackle Alex. by Ziegler. And we'll look to catch him on the counter. Although I don't have much weight in the way of support. Davis. Ah, I couldn't quite get that out of his feet in time. Our throw, though. Having a good game here against Brighton. Certainly playing better in this one. Although, actually, to be fair, first half performance against Liverpool was good. I'd say we're about matching our first half performance against Liverpool. The difference is that we've scored and they don't have Alisson in goal. Free kick for Brighton, right on the edge of the box. Oliveira and Pascal Gross stood over it. There's only three and a half minutes left to go in the half. It is going to be Pascal Gross, the German. I genuinely thought that was flying into the top corner then. Heart in the mouth stuff at the back for us. Wasn't the best of challenges from Parejo that led to their free kick. Ziegler can't keep that in. It would have been a really nice turn. Tried to replicate what Ruben Loftus-Cheek did in the um, Carabao Cup final. Absolutely beautiful touch to take it around the defender that was closing him down. Absolutely ruined him off. Unfortunately, we didn't come away with the result there. As you guys know, I was at that game. I did start to vlog it, but then my phone battery was so low that I had to stop recording footage. So, unfortunately, there is no match day vlog from the uh, the Carabao Cup final. But regardless of whatever happened there, it's 1-0 to us here. Down the line there to Uno. Cuts back well to Hill. To Tom Davies. Tom Davies. In there to Sabi. It's really good footwork from Sabi. And Ziegler with the delivery. It's well stood up, but there's just too many defenders back there. We do something from the set piece. Uno to deliver. It's decent. Oh, Diawara gets to it. Let me change player, please. Thank you. Getrauda will cut back. Get that to Bogle. In the middle there to Tom Davies. There's Suarez Garcia. That's not Suarez Garcia. That's Uno. It was meant for Suarez Garcia. We'll look for him again now. No, Caramo takes the ball away from me. Navarro gets it back to him. And Matt Penny misses the tackle. Counter-attack is on here for Brighton. And we're going to need to put an end to it sooner rather than later. But they're keeping the ball well. But a lot of possession in this game, to be fair, Brighton. But they haven't really done anything with it to this point. Although, after a good first half against Liverpool and a poor second, I'd really like to avoid replicating that. At least on this occasion, we've gotten a goal to go in front. Although Brighton score the same amount as Liverpool did. We'll still lose. Davis heads away, but Sonny March will retain possession for Brighton. Could cross. He's getting away from me. He's too quick. It's a good delivery from Sonny March. And Felipe Vizio heads it round to Caramo, who thumps it home. Brighton do have an equaliser at the beginning of the half. Cross here to Davis. Ball to Suarez Garcia through the gap to Savi. It's to Suarez Garcia again. 
And Savvy is there again. Oh, it's a lovely ball through. We're about to go back in front. We are from kickoff. Emmanuel Savvy, the saviour once again, right in front of those travelling away fans. Cambridge 2, Brighton 1. Barely three or four minutes after they pulled it back, we go back in front. Really nice play between Suarez, Garcia and Savvy, and that pass was perfection, as was the finish, in fairness. His 11th goal of the Premier League season, and they were only in front, or sorry, they were only back level for a matter of five minutes or so. In store for you. You are across the Solly March. Are they about to do to me what I just did to them and score from kickoff? No is the answer. Forrest Garcia will get that to Savvy and Adebola is on his bike and sprinting. Adebola's not got the pace of Uno, but he has gotten away from the defence. Doesn't finish. Oh, Suarez Garcia can't get there at a stretch. He's just not tall enough. Tom Davies to deliver the ball into the middle from the corner. It's decent. Perella's up. It's going to drop. Oh, no, it wasn't Perella. <laughs> Oscar Hill then. Suarez Garcia. Well, you're onside here. Terrible defensive positioning. And he's onside. Savvy with a hat trick. I mean, thank you. He's on, he's on his own. Look, no one tracks his run. He just turns it home. Absolutely. Well, oh, it's so easy for him there. The defence pushed. Oh, it was Adebola. I thought it was Savvy. Adebola off the bench scores a goal. I genuinely thought it was Savvy. Uh, okay. No hat trick for Savvy, but it is a goal for Adebola. Cambridge 3, Brighton 1. Just as Brighton thought they got themselves back in it, 10 minutes later, they're two goals behind again. Corner for Brighton, seven minutes to go. Sonny March has gone off for them, and they made a change. Pulled back here to Baba Diawara. He's going to shoot. Gun has been questionable. He's near post recently, so right idea to go for that area of the goal, but unfortunately... This time, Gunn actually did make a decent save. Caramo will bring that down, knock it down to Diawara. He could shoot again. He has done. No, he went for a pass. Now the bowler takes it away. Savvy. Good turn. Ziegler's there. Suarez Garcia's gone. If the pass is good enough, we could be in. Oh, he's got so little stamina left, Suarez Garcia. His little legs just can't carry him quickly enough. Might have to. Well, I just noticed the time in the game. I'm not. There's no point taking him off for Javier Morelos now. Uh, okay, Oscar Hill went for the tackle and then found himself on the floor. Good header by Perella though, and Suarez Garcia will knock that down to Adebola. Forward to Savvy, and we'll just hold the ball up and ensure that we get the victory. We might be able to get ourselves a fourth. I'll look for Savvy here, and if he's got the legs to get to that, he could be in for a hat-trick. Oh, it's a good save by Matthew Ryan. I thought he'd got his hat-trick earlier. It was Adebola instead, and he'll whip the ball in here, and Tom Davis could score us a fourth. No, cleared away, and that will be game, I think. Not even going to get the chance to build another effort. There we go. 3-1 win against Brighton. Needed that after defeat against Liverpool. Very much so. Really pleased to get the victory and in the manner in which we did as well. They had over 60% possession, Brighton, but they didn't do enough with it. Uh, let's have a look at uh, Watford win. Oh, just didn't look quickly enough there. Right, we are four points clear of Cardiff. So we, we do look good for a top half finish. But we are eight points behind Wolves in six. So we're probably going to be finishing seventh, eighth or ninth. But there's probably a good 20 or 30 million in the uh, prize fund between those positions. And obviously things could go much better or much worse between now and the end of the year as well. But it looks like we might be able to uh, just sneak a top half of the table finish in our first year in the Premier League, which would be pretty spectacular, especially after the way the season started. We've gotten much, much better towards the end of the year. We were rather poor, it has to be said, in the first half of the season. But things going really well for us right now with a win against Forest in the last game of the episode and of the month, we might be able to go that little bit higher. Monier up now to 74 rated. We'll see if we can get ourselves up from 9th into 8th or 7th with this next game against Forest. Pudil in goal for Forest. Dariqua, Figueredo, Hugma and Robinson at the back. Mazzitelli and Kubas in midfield. Hugma actually scored twice in the simulated game against Forest earlier this season to give them a 2-1 victory over us. Matty Cash, who's on our shortlist on the right-hand side, we'll see how he plays today. And then hopefully by the end of the month, we should have the full scout report back on a couple of the other players. I've got a scout report back now on Matty Cash, but I'm still waiting on a scout report on a couple of the other players on the shortlist. Obviously, Woodburn, we know that we probably don't want, but still waiting, waiting on one on the uh, youngster from Manchester City. So we'll see what his stats look like at the end of the month and then be able to make an informed decision as to what player we buy from there. 
I just want to make sure that we get points on the field first, though. That's the most important thing for us right now. They are the lowest scorers in the league, Nottingham Forest. So I'd like a clean sheet, to be honest. Whether we'll get one or not, though, remains to be seen. Look quickly for Uno out wide. Turns his side nicely. Get it there to Suarez Garcia. And he gets fouled. No, just tackled. Although the home fans certainly feel he should have been given a foul on the edge of the box there. Whether it was in or outside, I'm not sure. With that header, please. Well up. Hill. Looking for Tom Davies. I want to look for Sabi. Oh, the pace. The Suarez Garcia. The save. Uno into the middle. Oh, that wasn't the best at all. Vogel. Well, oh, it just sat up. I could not resist. If that flies tops, it's a great goal. And to be fair, it really actually wasn't that far away at all. Oh, if that had gone in. Wow. He could cross it now. And there's the cutback. Oh. That was just so good. I couldn't react quickly enough. Gunn saves it and they'll take the corner. They're going to go short. Cavallo is going to dip it into the middle. And Getrauda is there to head away. Unfortunately, I've got nobody in a position to chase the loose ball down. Osborne points to the cutback on his left. Gives it to Derica instead. Carvalho. Nice tackle by Uno. And we're away. Poked up forward. Ah, can't get it. Kubas across to Robinson. Be happy with a nil-nil at half-time. The way Forrest have played so far. They've... Uh, Certainly played better than me, that's for sure. Which is unexpected considering where they are in the table. Ziegler across there to Tom Davies. Uno could really get away here if the pass is right. And the pass was right. We'll look to accelerate. Oh, we'll run straight to the defender. Oh, that's dropped nicely for me. Savvy quickly out of your feet. Ziegler early. Oh, wow. I just I had no idea where that was going to end up when he struck it outside the boot. Look at that bend back towards goal. Oh, if only that and the Bogle efforts had gone in. So it would have been two of the best goals we've ever scored. There he is across to Oscar Hill. Out wide is Ziegler. Get it inside early. Oh, and it's opened up for Sabi. Please tell me you were onside. He was. Emmanuel Sabi. Always have faith in the man. When set free like that, 99% of the time he puts it away. Sometimes I mess it up by trying to set myself too much and allowing the defender to get back. And I nearly did that there. I just let go with the shot at the right time. His 12th goal of the Premier League season. He's having a very good game. But that's his last action. I committed to take him off for Gerzic because he wasn't doing anything for me to that point in the game, Sabi. And then out of nowhere, he pops up with a goal. Down the line there to Osborne. Ziegler could track back but can't get there. And Robinson's in behind Jaden Vogel. Early ball. Cuthrad is there again. So good, Cuthrad. I don't care that he's 73 rated. He's just absolutely brilliant. Matty Cassian behind though. Side netting. There must have been a memo go round that Angus Gunn isn't saving many at his near post. Because that's where everyone's been going in today's episode. Some have gone in. Some have hit the side netting. Thankfully, that one was one of the latter. Is Lunga. Oh, it might reach that Clough. It does. With practically the last kick of the game, Zach Clough comes off the bench to gift Forrest a point. Picks the ball up, plays the one two with the Lunga, and oh, there's so many yellow shirts around the ball, but no one can get near it. And then that timed finish, first time effort, sliding away from the keeper into the back of the net. Forest are going to take a point from this. And I can't believe we've let them equalise right at the very end. That's devastating. Still, though, four points from today's episode, but really should have been six. Not many chances in the game as it happens. Again, I didn't keep possession. Well, Palace lose. Fulham win. Leicester lose. They were near us. Uh, Liverpool beat Watford. So Liverpool are on a bit of a run right now. We are up into eighth, although Everton do have a game in hand and could go above us with... Just a point. Oh, seven points to Wolves now, but they have a game in hand as well. Brighton's still in fifth. So to be fair, to have beaten Brighton, we did very well, especially in the manner in which we did it. Brighton in fifth place in the Premier League this season. Liverpool up to 13th now, and Arsenal have dropped back down to 12th. Although Newcastle could go above both of them. In fact, Newcastle could go as high as 
What's their goal difference? Minus six. And Cardiff is minus ten. If Newcastle win their game in hand, they could go up a size ten. And then be right in this hunt for a top half finish. We're certainly in the hunt for a top half finish. Are these emails? Ah, final scout report back on Daniel Arzani. That's the one we're waiting for. Right, Greg Taylor. I mean, you're retiring at the end of the season, Greg. You're not. We will give you a game in the final home game of the season to say goodbye to the fans. As mentioned by someone in the comment section. But unfortunately, you're not going to get much game time outside of that. Right, Arzani. 79 rated. Quick. 33 strength, though, is a big turnoff for me. Technically, he's okay, but there are certainly better options. Woodburn was 80 rated, as we saw. Matty Cash was 78 rated. I still think my favourite is Adamola Lookman at this stage. 25 years of age. Four-star week for English, of course, and can play up top as well. I'm going to go and try and buy Adamola Lookman, and then we can bring him into the club for next season. And then sell Uno and improve elsewhere. We had a really good budget this year, 50-plus million pounds. I'm hoping that perhaps... We could have a similar budget next year. Lookman is... Oh, they want 32. He's not quite in their first team at Everton. So we could get a decent deal here. 32 is affordable. But if we could get him for less than we will. 26.9. I'm quite happy to accept that. They certainly came down a long way from their 32 million. And we shall try and get him on a contract. What's he on a week right now? That's what I want to know. He's on £99,000 a week currently. Let's see what we can get him for. For next season, I'm not sure whether it take a wage cut. A few people, a few players have taken a wage cut to come to us. I'll say important, but if he wants crucial, I'll give it to him. I'll give it to him. Uh, a few players have taken a wage cut to come to us, so we might find that Adam Lookman would do the same for guaranteed first team football. But I'm not entirely too sure whether we'll be that lucky. I'll ask for four. They'll play or they'll accept four. Sorry, or disregard the release clause. Now, is he going to give me any indication of what he wants? He's not. I'll offer. 80 and a signing bonus of £800,000. Will they negotiate from there? They will. Not need to. Adam Lookman will join us next season. We have our new left sided midfielder for season number six. Adam Lookman will join us next year. However, right now, we have Manchester United on the horizon. This is the youth squad right now. Bailey now 65 rated. He's certainly growing well. 63 for Colin Cooper. Sprint speed is going up. Technicals going up as well. Rob Gray still 62. 57 for Taylor Mason. Uh, this is a new guy, Will Harrison. I called him up because he's 61 rated at 15 years of age. 80 to 94 potential for him. Hopefully he improves soon. Uh, Bruce Wood up to 66. So he's growing well at 17. And Lucas Henderson 87 to 94 potential for him. He too is growing well as, as well. Need to add some more of those youngsters to my uh, training presets. But Everton did win their game in hand. So we're rocked or locked even in ninth. But four points above Newcastle and Cardiff. And five points above Fulham. Arsenal and Liverpool then next. So I think we are going to get a top half finish this season. Pretty remarkable really. Although there are still eight games to go. Five of which will be in the next episode. We shall play Huddersfield, Fulham and West Ham, simulate Manchester City and Manchester United and see how we do. But for now, that's all for this episode. Thank you very much for watching, guys. Drop the video a like if you enjoyed. Make sure you subscribe to the channel too so you don't miss out on any more content, whether it's this or the Achieve and Leave, where we, of course, now are at Dortmund. But for today, that's all from me. I'll see you next time.